Alright, how's it going guys? So my name is PO17 or P017, whichever you prefer to call me, and I wanted to bring you this really awesome video on this particular CRT TV. So as you can see as I brighten up the screen here, you can see that this is a nice cute little flat CRT TV. In particular, this one is the Toshiba 14A of 43, which is a pretty common but pretty nice CRT TV that a lot of people like. This one in particular came in for servicing if you watched my previous short video that I just made. Uh, so this one here needed a little bit of work, but overall was still pretty good. Uh, nothing too crazy on it, and I already made these adjustments, so I just wanted to show you the nice picture that it has here. But overall, what we're going to do is we're going to have a little bit of an overview of this set, show you some of the internals, because I do have this TV taken apart right now, as you can see. Here's the back of the TV. We're going to take a look at it, see why it's so good, and why a lot of people like it, but also show you a couple other unique features about it. So let's go ahead and get into it. Get into it. So of course, the first thing as you can see on this TV down on the bottom here is you have your big power button as well as your volume control and your channel control and video three. So this is composite input with a headphone jack up front. We'll go ahead and look over on this here just because I have this taken apart. So this is the back of the plastic casing of the tube. So this here, as you can see on the Toshiba logo, this is made in October of 2003, and the model number is a 14A of 43. Back here, you might notice there's a lot of holes for cutouts for the video inputs, and I'll go ahead and show them to you here shortly. But essentially speaking, what you have is RF, composite, S-video, and component. So this TV is loaded with inputs on this set. So it's that one in there is just the front video input. Let's go ahead and show it around the back side. Also to note, this is a stereo system as well, which is pretty neat for a little 14-inch set. You don't really get stereo. But down here, of course, this is your main board right here, as well as your flyback transformer with focus and G2 voltage adjustments. Right here, this is where your neck and your neck board are, as well as your conversion strings, which I had to do a conversions adjustment on, so this is why this is a little different. <clears throat> but over on this side here, this is where you have your tube model. So this is an Orion tube, and in fact, this whole entire setup is an Orion setup. So yes, this does says Toshiba on the front here. However, Toshiba did outsource their name to Orion after some time in the early 2000s or something like that. I can't remember the exact specifics, but this is an Orion tube set. So just understand that this isn't technically a true Toshiba. However, it is still really good. Now, as you can see down here, these are the video inputs. You have S-Video, which is plugged in right now, composite, composite again, component, and a composite out, which is that very last one there. So, for a 14-inch set, you get composite S-Video and component, which is absolutely insane. Oh, and also, I forgot to mention, you have your RF antenna as well, for those who like playing on Atari. So, overall, the set is really cool because it's loaded with features, and as you can see here on the screen, the screen is super duper nice. So I have this, of course, running on S-Video. This is through my Super Nintendo. And as you can see as a close-up right here, this is a surprisingly good set. Now, some of the adjustments that I had already made to it, I already did some service menu adjustments to make sure everything was good in terms of the geometry and convergence, as well as a focus adjustment. And just an overall servicing in general, just making sure everything looked good. There's nothing out of place with it whatsoever. The only thing that's out of place is this cosmetic injury, but that's the least of my concerns. So, this set's super nice. I love this set overall, and it is pretty good. So, even with the Orion name, this TV is surprisingly well set. Now, let's go ahead and get into a couple things here. So, I'm going to go ahead and get into the menu. All right. So I'm going to be using this Toshiba remote that came with this set. Also with this remote, make sure this is set to TV before you do anything or else you might not be able to use this remote. So for the menu here, this is how I have things set up. Contrast, brightness, color, tint, and sharpness. I also had to do a tint adjust in the service menu in particular because even set at zero, it was tinted to pink. So I had to readjust the slider for that. Sharpness set to 32. That's pretty good on this set particularly. Color not too crazy. Brightness and contrast all good. You have your audio settings as well if you wanted to change those, as well as your channel setup and some of your other options that don't really matter too much right now. But overall, 
So that's your main menu settings. Now to get into your service menu, what you're going to want to do is this. So you're going to want to hold the volume and just keep holding it as it hits zero and then hold nine on the remote here. So if you do that, you will bring up your service menu. So this is your typical Orion service menu. This applies to pretty much any Orion TV that has a service menu. I've owned another Toshiba in the past that was an Orion HD set and it has the exact same look, including the exact same OSD that uh, is the start here. So as we go through these service menu adjustments, uh, we have H phase, which is your H uh, horizontal adjust for your position. Uh, AFC gain, don't really know what that is, but don't touch it. Vertical shift, this is to shift the vertical screen up or down. You also have a vertical shift adjustment inside the set as well, and it's a potentiometer. So if you find that your vertical shift is zero, but this thing is too high, you may have to open up the tube and adjust that little potentiometer. And in fact, I'll actually show it to you right now where it is. So over on here, if you look down here, there's that little white speck that sits a little bit underneath that wire that's hanging right there. That little plus spec there is your potentiometer for your vertical position. So if that is not set correctly on this tube, uh, you may get a vertical position that is too high that you can't change in the service menu. So you want to be able to make sure that that uh, is set correctly as well. You have your H size as well. This actually does not do anything. Unfortunately, this set did not come with a size function. I really wish it did because it does need a little bit of an adjustment there. Uh, has vertical size. This does actually work. So you can change your vertical size, your vertical linearity, your correction for your VS. I don't really exactly know how to explain it too well, but uh, essentially speaking, it just corrects some of the corners or some of the bottom or top. Uh, overall, red, red drive, blue drive, so these are your color adjustments. So you have red, green, and blue bias, as well as red and blue drive. Bias also can be called cutoff, depending on your set. Same thing. Uh, overall, I had to do a little bit of adjustment on this because it was too blue uh, for the biases. So on the white uh, color backgrounds, if it was too dim, it would be too blue. And for the red drive, or the brighter white colors... Uh, it was too red, so I had to adjust the red drive down just a little bit. Now, unfortunately, I couldn't find a way to, uh, if there was any sort of, like, red push on this set. So, for those who don't know, on NTSC signals, especially in America, uh, on these TV sets, they tend to make the reds bloom a lot more on these sets, so they're a lot brighter uh, and warmer. And, unfortunately, there are some sets that you just cannot turn that off on. Uh, it does make the picture a little bit warmer overall and just... It's, just, it's messing with the colors in a way, so I like to make it as neutral as possible. And unfortunately, you can't really fix that on this from what I can tell. You can only mitigate it. But anyways, as you can see going through here, this is the brightness min uh, max, the contrast, contrast min max, as well as the centering. So this is if you were to adjust your sliders in your main menu. Uh, this is where it would start, be in the middle, and end at. Uh, you also have your color for that, and your tint for that, your sharpness for that as well. Uh, and then all these here, your parabola, corner, trapezium, unfortunately, you cannot do anything with these. But, overall, this set is still really good for what it does. When you're done with that, you just hit the menu button, and it goes away. So this set is really nice. Overall, I like this set a lot, and with this being adjusted now, I don't really have to do anything too much more to this, so this is as good as it gets. Also, there is one more thing I do want to show here. So right now, I want to go to video 3. So as you can see here, I'm having Sonic 3 play on composite video. And I wanted to show this one in particular because this has a three-line comb filter on composite, and it's pretty solid for what it is. It does still have composite dot crawl, unfortunately, just a little bit. But overall, the actual set, or the composite filtering for the uh, comb filter is really good for what it is. So if I can get this to work properly instead of flashing everything, you can see overall... It's a surprisingly clear image, even for composite video. So composite video is still very much worth uh, running in the set if that's all you have. But of course, if you uh, for the best experiences, I'd recommend using S-Video or Component. But that's pretty much all I got for this set. So if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. Send it through the algorithm so more people can see this. Uh, overall, tell me what you guys think. If you have one of these sets, if you have its brothers, so for example, the AF42 which I will be doing a video on as well. If you saw the preview video, I have three little CRTs that I'm going to be doing 
uh, adjustments and making videos on. So overall, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so much. Hope to see you in the next video when I adjust this guy's brother.